Today's topic is something every practice owner and administrator should be familiar with, Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI, and the alphabet soup of improvement methodologies that come with it, like PDSA, Six Sigma, Lean, and FMEA. You might be thinking, great, more buzzwords. But the truth is, these concepts have the potential to make a huge impact on the way your practice operates. Whether you're trying to improve patient outcomes, streamline your operations, or reduce costs, CQI offers a structured, data-driven way to get there. Welcome to Medical Money Matters, the podcast where you can find experts, answers, and resources so that you can achieve mastery over the financial and business aspects of your practice. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Jill Arena. I began my career in accounting and finance, and I have more than 30 years of experience running medical groups. I own and operate a national healthcare consulting and revenue cycle company, and I am the author of Physician Heal Thy Financial Self. In 2020, I co-founded the Physician Leadership Project, and my passion is to increase financial and business literacy for physicians. Episode 91, The Science of Improvement, How CQI Can Transform Your Practice. Welcome to the Medical Money Matters podcast, where we explore the business of medicine and the strategies that help medical groups thrive. Today's topic is something every practice owner and administrator should be familiar with, Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI, and the alphabet soup of improvement methodologies that come with it, like PDSA, Six Sigma, Lean, and FMEA. You might be thinking, great, more buzzwords. But the truth is, these concepts have the potential to make a huge impact on the way your practice operates. Whether you're trying to improve patient outcomes, streamline your operations, or reduce costs, CQI offers a structured, data-driven way to get there. And as physicians and healthcare leaders, you're already equipped with the skills to succeed using these methods. The best part? CQI isn't that different from the scientific method that every physician learned in medical school. You're used to observing, diagnosing, testing, and analyzing in the clinical setting. CQI simply applies that same rigor to your practice's operations. By using data, setting measurable goals, and making continuous adjustments, you can refine your processes to deliver better results for both your patients and your bottom line. So what exactly is CQI? At its core, continuous quality improvement is a systematic approach to improving the effectiveness, efficiency, and safety of your practice's processes. It's about making small, incremental changes that accumulate into significant improvements over time. Instead of relying on sweeping reforms or gut instincts, CQI emphasizes ongoing measurement, analysis, and refinement based on real data. The key principles of CQI are pretty straightforward. First, it's continuous. It's not something you do once and then forget about. It's an ongoing process of testing, learning, and adjusting. Second, it involves everyone. It's not just the administrators or practice managers driving change. It's a collaborative effort that includes physicians, nurses, front desk staff, and even patients. Finally, CQI is outcome focused. Every change you make is geared toward improving specific measurable outcomes, whether that's reducing wait times, increasing patient satisfaction, or boosting financial performance. One of the great things about CQI is that it aligns perfectly with what every medical practice is already trying to achieve, delivering high quality care in an efficient and cost-effective way. But beyond the benefits to patient care, it can also help you optimize your business operations. For example, let's say your practice is struggling with appointment scheduling. Maybe patients are waiting too long for appointments, or perhaps you're dealing with too many no-shows. A CQI approach would involve breaking down that process, gathering data on where the bottlenecks are, testing small changes, and then measuring the results to see what works. 
Over time, those small improvements add up and create a more efficient system that works better for both your staff and your patients. One popular tool in the CQI Toolkit is the PDSA cycle, which stands for Plan, Do, Study, Act. It's one of the most widely used methodologies for quality improvement, and it's great for medical practices because it's simple, flexible, and iterative. You can apply it to just about any process in your practice from patient intake to billing. The PDSA cycle starts with the plan phase. In this phase, you identify the problem you want to solve and develop a plan for testing a small change. For example, if your practice is struggling with long patient wait times, your plan might involve testing a new system for scheduling appointments more efficiently. Next is the do phase where you implement the change on a small scale. You might try out your new scheduling system with just one provider or for one type of appointment. The goal here is to test the change in a controlled way without an overhauling your entire system. After that comes the study phase. This is where you analyze the data and assess whether the change led to the improvement you were hoping for. Did patient wait times decrease? Did staff feel less rushed? Did patient satisfaction scores go up? You'll look at the data to understand what worked and what didn't. Finally, there's the act phase where you decide whether to adopt the change, modify it, or abandon it altogether. If the results were positive, you might decide to roll out the new scheduling system across your entire practice. If the results were mixed, you might tweak the system and run another PDSA cycle. And if it didn't work at all, you'll go back to the drawing board with the knowledge that you gained. Let's go through an example of how PDSA can work in a real medical practice. I recently heard about a small primary care group that was struggling with its patient intake process. Patients were frustrated because they were waiting too long to be seen by a provider and the staff was feeling overwhelmed. Using the PDSA cycle, they decided to test a small change. Instead of having patients fill out paperwork at the office, they sent digital forms to patients ahead of time through a secure portal. For the plan phase, they chose to test this new approach with just one physician's patients for a week. During the due phase, they rolled out the digital forms and tracked how many patients completed them before their appointments. In the study phase, they compared the wait times for patients who completed their forms ahead of time to those who didn't, and they found that patients who used the digital forms spent significantly less time in the waiting room. In the ACT phase, the practice decided to adopt the new process for all of its patients. Over time, they refined the system further based on feedback from both staff and patients, ultimately reducing wait times across the board. So why does PDSA work so well for physicians? The answer lies in its simplicity and its parallels to the clinical process. Just like diagnosing a patient, you're identifying a problem, developing a hypothesis, testing that hypothesis in a controlled environment, and then analyzing the results to make adjustments. It's scientific thinking applied to practice management, and it allows for a low-risk way to test changes before fully committing to them. And this is just one method within CQI. There are several other improvement methodologies that can help your practice achieve its goals, each with its own strengths and applications. Let's talk about a few of them. Some of you may have heard of Six Sigma, which is often used in industries like manufacturing, but has been successfully applied in healthcare as well. Six Sigma is all about reducing variation and eliminating defects in processes. In healthcare, this could mean anything from reducing medication errors to improving patient flow in a hospital. Six Sigma uses data-driven approach to identify and eliminate the root cause of problems, often with dramatic results. For example, a large hospital system used Six Sigma to tackle the issue of medication errors, which were leading to adverse patient outcomes and higher costs. By analyzing the data, they were able to identify several key points in the medication administration process where errors were most likely to occur. They implemented new protocols, trained staff, and measured the impact. The result? 
a significant reduction in medication errors and improved patient safety across the board. Another popular methodology is lean, which focuses on eliminating waste and maximizing value in your processes. In healthcare, this could involve cutting down on unnecessary steps in the patient visit process, improving inventory management, or optimizing staff workflows. Lean is particularly effective for practices looking to improve efficiency without sacrificing quality. Lean's focus on reducing waste makes it a natural fit for medical practices where time and resources are often stretched thin. Let's look at another example, this time a medical group that was struggling with its supply chain. They were consistently over-ordering certain medical supplies while running out of others, leading to wasted money and frustration for the staff. Using lean principles, the practice decided to map out their entire supply chain process. They identified steps that weren't adding any value, like multiple layers of approval for small orders, and eliminated them. They also streamlined their inventory system, allowing them to track supply levels in real time and order only what was needed. The result was a more efficient supply chain with lower costs and fewer stockouts. Staff had what they needed when they needed it, and the practice saved money by not over-purchasing supplies. Finally, there's Failure Modes and Effects Analysis, or FMEA. This methodology is all about identifying potential points of failure in a process before they happen and developing strategies to mitigate those risks. In healthcare, where mistakes can have serious consequences, FMEA can be an invaluable tool for improving patient safety. For instance, a surgery center used FMEA to evaluate its preoperative procedures. They conducted a detailed analysis of every step leading up to surgery from the moment a patient walked through the door to the point where they were wheeled into the operating room. The team identified several areas where things could potentially go wrong, such as miscommunication during the handoff from pre-op to the operating room, or the risk of patients not properly fasting before surgery. By proactively identifying these failure modes, the center was able to implement new safeguards like standardized handoff procedures and more rigorous pre-op checks. As a result, they significantly reduced the number of complications and improved overall patient outcomes. What's interesting is that these methodologies, Lean, Six Sigma, FMEA, and PDSA, aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, many successful medical groups combine elements of all of them to create a comprehensive quality improvement strategy. The key is to understand the strengths of each approach and apply them where they fit best. So, how do you choose the right methodology for your practice? The answer depends on your specific challenges and goals. If your main issue is inefficiency, like too much time spent on non-value added activities, then lean might be your best place to start. If you're dealing with errors or variability in processes, like inconsistent patient outcomes or fluctuating costs, Six Sigma could be a good fit. If you're concerned about preventing potential failures, particularly in high-risk areas, FMEA could help you anticipate and address those issues before they become critical. And, of course, PDSA is a versatile tool that can be applied in just about any situation. The beauty of CQI methodologies is that they aren't one-size-fits-all. You can tailor them to fit the unique needs of your practice, and you can start small. You don't need to overhaul your entire organization overnight. Begin with a single process, test a change, and build from there. One of the biggest challenges practices face when implementing CQI is getting physicians and administrators to embrace these methodologies. The day-to-day -day demands of running a medical practice can make it hard to prioritize improvement efforts, especially when the payoff isn't immediate. But this is where the mindset shift comes in. By framing CQI as a way to enhance patient care and reduce burnout, rather than just another management tool, you can help your team to see the value. Remember, physicians are scientists by nature. They're trained to approach problems methodically 
to collect data, to analyze it, and to apply their findings to improve patient care. CQI is simply an extension of that process, but instead of focusing solely on patient outcomes, it broadens the scope to include the entire practice. To help physicians and administrators get on board with CQI, it's crucial to make the process collaborative. Involve your team from the beginning, ask for their input on which processes need improvement, encourage them to suggest potential solutions, and make them part of the testing and evaluation phases. When physicians feel like their expertise and insights are valued, they're more likely to engage with the process. It's also important to celebrate small wins along the way. CQI is a long-term investment, and sometimes the results take time to become apparent. By recognizing incremental improvements, whether it's a slight reduction in wait times, fewer billing errors, or even just a smoother workflow, you reinforce the value of continuous improvement and keep your team motivated. Another practical tip is to start with something that's close to physicians' hearts, patient care. For example, you might begin by using CQI to address a clinical process that directly impacts patient outcomes, like improving diabetes management or reducing hospital readmissions. When physicians see the tangible benefits of CQI in areas they're passionate about, they'll be more inclined to apply the same principles to operational processes as well. The ultimate goal is to make CQI part of the fabric of your organization. When continuous improvement becomes a natural part of how you operate, you're able to respond more effectively to challenges, stay ahead of regulatory changes, and continually enhance both the patient experience and your practice's financial health. To wrap up this first half of our discussion, we've talked about what CQI is and how it's particularly suited to healthcare. We've also dived into the PDSA cycle and touched on other improvement methodologies like Six Sigma, Lean, and FMEA. Each of these approaches offers a structured way to make improvements and they can be used individually or in combination depending on your practice's needs. In the second half of this episode, we'll take a closer look at some real-world examples of how practices have successfully implemented CQI, and we'll discuss how you can get started on your own CQI journey. We'll also explore ways to overcome the common challenges that practices face when trying to implement continuous improvement strategies. For now, I encourage you to think about how these methodologies could apply to your practice. What processes are causing the most pain points? Where could you start making small, data-driven changes? The answers to these questions could be the key to unlocking a more efficient, effective, and patient-centered practice. Now, let's shift gears and dive into some real-world examples of practices that have successfully implemented CQI and the impact it's had on their operations and patient care. One case that really stands out is a multi-specialty practice that decided to take a practice-wide approach to CQI. They were facing a host of challenges from patient satisfaction issues to operational inefficiencies. Instead of trying to tackle everything at once, they started small using the PDSA cycle to test changes in specific areas of the practice. For example, they began by focusing on improving the check-in process, which was a common source of frustration for patients. They mapped out the existing process and identified several pain points, such as long lines at the front desk and unclear instructions for patients. Their plan phase involved a simple change. They added an electronic check-in kiosk for patients who had pre-registered online. During the due phase, they rolled out the kiosk for one provider's patients and collected data on wait times and patient feedback. In the study phase, they found that patients using the kiosk had a significantly faster check-in process, and staff at the front desk had more time to assist patients who needed help. Based on these results, they decided to implement the kiosk for the entire practice during the ACT phase. But they didn't stop there. Encouraged by the success of this change, the practice applied the same PDSA cycle to other areas, like patient scheduling, billing, and even clinical workflows. Over time, they created a culture of continuous improvement where small, data-driven changes were constantly being tested 
evaluated, and adopted if they worked. The result? Improved patient satisfaction scores, more efficient workflows, and a noticeable reduction in staff burnout. What's important about this example is that it highlights how CQI doesn't have to be overwhelming. This practice didn't try to change everything at once. They started with one process, tested a small change, and gradually expanded their efforts as they saw positive results. That's a key takeaway for any practice considering CQI. You can start small, and those incremental changes can add up to big improvements over time. Another great example of CQI in action comes from a primary care clinic that used data to drive its decision making. This clinic was struggling with managing patients with chronic conditions, particularly those with diabetes. They wanted to improve their management of these patients, reduce complications, and ultimately lower hospital readmission rates. The first step was gathering data. The clinic started tracking key metrics like HbA1c levels, adherence to medication, and the frequency of follow-up appointments. They used this data to identify trends and areas where patients were slipping through the cracks, like missed follow-ups or inconsistent medication adherence. With this data in hand, the clinic developed a plan for a small test of change. They introduced a care management program that involved assigning care coordinators to their high-risk diabetic patients. These coordinators were responsible for reaching out to patients to remind them about appointments, check in on medication adherence, and provide education about managing their condition. After rolling out the program with a small group of patients, the do phase, the clinic carefully studied the results. They saw a clear improvement in hemoglobin A1C levels, and patients in the program had fewer hospital admissions related to diabetes complications. Armed with this data from the study phase, the clinic expanded the program to include more patients. Over time, the clinic saw a significant improvement in its ability to manage chronic conditions, which not only improved patient outcomes, but also reduced costs associated with hospital readmissions. What these case studies show is that CQI isn't just about improving operational efficiency, it's about improving patient care as well. When you use data to identify problems and test solutions, you're able to make changes that have a direct impact on patient outcomes. And for physicians, this is a powerful motivator. CQI isn't just about running a better business, it's about delivering better care. Of course, implementing CQI in your practice isn't without its challenges. One of the most common hurdles is getting everyone on board especially in a busy medical practice where time is already at a premium. Physicians and staff may be skeptical about the need for another, quote, initiative, quote, or they might feel like they simply don't have the bandwidth to participate in improvement efforts. So how do you overcome this resistance and get your team to embrace CQI? One of the most effective strategies is to start with a problem that's meaningful to your team. Rather than focusing on an abstract business goal like reducing overhead, begin with something that directly affects patient care or staff well-being. When physicians see that CQI can lead to real, tangible improvements in the areas they care about most, like reducing patient wait times, improving clinical outcomes, or alleviating staff burnout, they're more likely to engage with the process. Another strategy is to make CQI as collaborative and inclusive as possible. Involve your entire team in the process of identifying problems and brainstorming potential solutions. Create opportunities for staff to share their ideas and contribute to the improvement process. When everyone feels like they have a voice in shaping the changes, they're more likely to be invested in the outcomes. It's also important to provide ongoing education and support. Many physicians and staff members may not be familiar with CQI methodologies like PDSA or LEAN, so offering training and resources can help demystify the process. By equipping your team with the knowledge and tools they need, you empower them to take ownership of CQI efforts. Finally, remember to celebrate your wins no matter how small. Continuous improvement is a long-term commitment and the results may not always be immediate. By recognizing and celebrating incremental successes, whether it's a small reduction in patient wait times or a smoother workflow for the front desk, 
you reinforce the value of CQI and keep your team motivated to continue the work. So, where should you begin? The best place to start is by identifying a single process or area of your practice that could use improvement. It could be something as simple as reducing patient no-shows, streamlining the billing process, or improving follow-up care for chronic conditions. Once you've identified the problem, gather some baseline data to understand the current state, and then develop a small test of change using a methodology like PDSA. Start small, measure the results, and build from there. As you begin to see improvements, you can expand your CQI efforts to other areas of the practice. Over time, you'll start to build a culture of continuous improvement where everyone in the practice is constantly looking for ways to enhance the quality of care and the efficiency of operations. To wrap things up, continuous quality improvement offers a powerful framework for driving positive change in medical practices. Whether you're using PDSA, Lean, Six Sigma, or FMEA, these methodologies provide a structured, data-driven approach to solving problems and improving outcomes. And by embracing CQI, you're not only enhancing your practice's operational efficiency, you're also delivering better care to your patients, which is ultimately what it's all about. I encourage you to take that first step and explore how CQI could benefit your practice. Whether it's a small change in the way you schedule patients or a larger initiative to improve chronic disease management, the principles of continuous improvement can help you achieve your goals and create a more successful, sustainable practice. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Medical Money Matters. I hope you found this discussion on CQI and improvement methodologies helpful and that it's given you some ideas to take back to your practice. If you have any questions or want to learn more about how healthy practices can help you implement CQI, feel free to reach out. We're here to help you succeed. Stay tuned for our next episode when I'll be talking with Shandy Welch about why you need a mastermind group and what it will do for you. You can find more information online at medicalmoneymatterspodcast.com and you can sign up to be notified when enrollment opens for the Medical Money Matters e-learning program for a mini MBA, physician style, which will carry CME credits and will be released in upcoming months. In that, we'll do an even deeper dive so you can understand dynamic budgeting strategies, cash flow forecasting, and other more esoteric financial concepts. We've included those links in the show notes. As I like to close out these podcasts, congratulations on taking the next step in your professional development and for making the commitment to learn about the financial and business aspects of your practice. I look forward to being on this journey with you and send you my heartfelt gratitude for all that you do for your patients all day, every day.